Hi everyone, welcome to part 10 in my 12 days of declutters. How are you guys? How's it going? Hope everyone's doing really, really well. Thank you so much for joining me for my 10th installment. So close, I'm so close to finishing these 12 days of declutters. Although apparently I'm a glutton for punishment because I am still considering doing a 13th installment of all of my skincare. <laughs> like so ready to be done with decluttering my makeup collection because you know there's like the rest of my life i i haven't even started on that and we're already in february but anywho i'm plowing through i'm getting through it today as you probably can tell is going to be all of my single pot shadows as well as sticks and uh, creams or liquids or whatever you call them i'm not going to be doing my actual single pan eyeshadows that are in empty well not empty but like in magnetic palettes there's the word magnetic i'm not gonna do those in this declutter because i haven't really used enough of those in a long time so instead what i'm gonna do this year is a lot more like build your own palette type of projects i didn't get a chance to film in january the build your own palette that my friends kelly from keep beauty real and kara from beauty in the frizz do they do like a every month they do a themed BYOP. I did, however, do that on Instagram. So if you're curious to see what my January slash most of February, really, because it gets filmed at the end of January. So really, we're using it for most of the following month. But if you're curious to see my very first BYOP of the year, then you can go ahead and head over to my Instagram account. Today, we're doing things that are like in drawers. I want to see what is realistic here for me to actually pull for because I'm not usually a single shadow type of person. I am more of a palette person. I don't want to be too cutthroat because I feel like I'm starting to dip my toes into single shadows or potted shadows or stick shadows, but I also don't want to keep things just because I'm wishing to be more of that type of person. I want to be realistic. So let's see how I do today. I have a feeling I will actually get rid of quite a few of these because some of these are very old and dried out and frankly I just don't feel like dealing with it anymore, but we'll get there in a minute. Before we jump in, for those of you guys that are new here, hi, my name is Natalia. I'm a concert pianist who loves all things makeup and beauty. And 2024 is kind of a continuation of what I started in 2023. In 2024, I really have decided to commit to using more of what is in my collection, discovering and rediscovering what is already here in my apartment. So I'm essentially using my own apartment as a beauty store. And occasionally, of course, I will bring in and you know something here and there because I do love following new trends and new makeup products and trying things out and of course I succumb to FOMO and all of that good stuff. So if you're here for basically a very mixed bag of content but that's going to heavily focus on what I already own and if you just like talking about makeup in general then I hope you will stick around and subscribe. Okay so there's really no rhyme and reason to how I store these products aside from like what's gonna fit let's start with this drawer because i have a feeling there's going to be more here that i'm actually going to get rid of and then we'll tackle these single pot type things okay so the very prominent part of this drawer is all of my Stila shimmer and glows, glitter and glows. Um, if you guys have been around in the beauty space long enough, you probably remember when these were very, very popular and very hyped up. They were just absolutely everywhere. And I don't know, maybe I, I'm not on TikTok. I don't watch TikTok. I know old products have now become trendy again in a lot of cases. I don't know if these are still popular, these liquid shadows, but the bottom line is I use them in the beginning because uh, I don't know because it was just fun and new and whatnot and then for some reason I just stopped using them I collected a whole bunch of them I think a ton of these I got either like CCOs or TJ Maxx's I don't believe I've actually paid for any of them full price and I even did go ahead and purchase the Inglot um, Durline because if you do put a drop or two of this into dried up shadows or dried up products in general sometimes this product can revive whatever has dried out and I've actually revived quite a lot of these that way and then continued to use them but honestly I think I'm done I think I will keep 
the Duraline because I'm sure I can still find use for this in other ways. But I think I'm done with all of these and I am sure they're all dry because I have not like, look, they're flaking. They're flaking already all over my desk. So yeah, I mean, I had Vivid Garnet, Sea Siren, which was a really cool shade that would like change colors. I don't quite know what the difference to be honest nowadays is between like holographic and I feel like this, this is as close to holographic as things got back in the day. Or maybe this would have been a multi-chrome. Either way, it's dry. I just don't see myself using these. So therefore, what is the point of reviving them? So these were, this was a glitter and glow. This was a shimmer and glow. This is another shimmer and glow. I can tell just by how non-glittery it is. This was a shimmer and glow in Bohem. And Bohem actually was a really pretty color that you could use even on an everyday basis. So I did use that one back in the day. I used to really like this one. This was next to Note, and this was, I believe, a glitter and glow, yeah. And this one actually seems like it still has some life in it, but I'm, I think I'm just gonna let it go. I just don't think these type of products really are for me. This was a Vivid Smoky Quartz, uh, a shimmer and glow that I used to also really, really like. And these were the three I did use the most if I wanted a glitter effect. So this was Diamond Dust. These are all glitter and glows. This came in a little set of three. This was Kitten Karma, which I believe at the time was one of the most popular ones. There is that one. I'm not going to swatch these because I don't think any of them are actually going to swatch. And then Smoky Storm was another really pretty one. So yeah, I could probably revive some of these, but I'm not going to. I'm going to get rid of all of them and just keep the door line. A couple of these products I've had in my Basket of Dooms back in 2023, and I actually loved the effect of this one. This was by, this was a Ciate London Shadow Flip. This was a multi-chrome. It even is called a multi-chromatic shifting liquid shadow. It was beautiful, but again, it was already too dry, and by now, it's even more dry and I think I did try to revive this and maybe I didn't put enough of the door line because I didn't feel like it really did much it was not easy to use and unfortunately I would have kept this if this was still good but unfortunately that needs to go because it's not this Kosas product I believe came in a Sephora favorites kit of some sort this is what are you called I don't know what it's called it's called I think a 10 second eye and the shade was called heat it was it was okay it was just nothing special it is still fine as far as, you know, it hasn't dried up. It smells a little alcoholy. I don't remember how it used to smell and if that's how it's supposed to smell. But I did try this again. This was in a basket of doom and it it was nothing special. Like I'm never going to choose this over an impactful powder eyeshadow. It's just not going to happen. I know that. I know myself well enough. This was another really pretty one. This one I feel like I got in a subscription box uh, uh, by now a while ago. And in Another one I really enjoyed using while it lasted, but I think it is also dry by now. This is the Cover FX Shimmer Veil, and this is in the shade Amethyst. That is what that looks like. Oh, this one is still okay, but it almost feels like it's too, too wet. Like almost like the alcohol maybe has separated from the pigment or something. Cause I remember now what the issue with this one was. I really enjoyed the color, but I didn't enjoy the fact that it was not opaque enough. Like I would have to use this over another eyeshadow because you could see my skin through it. And usually that's not how I like to use these types of products. Like I'm, I'm not going to do an eye look with a powder eyeshadow and then over the top of that go with something like that. I want this to be the main event and I would use a product like this on like the days where I want my makeup to be easier, not harder. So I think that's why I did not enjoy it as much as I thought I would. It's a really pretty color though, but I feel like I'm sure I have something like this. If it's not in a liquid, it's in a powder. So I don't think I need this. Here's two e.l.f. products that I actually used quite a bit when I first got them. I think I got this 
this as a freebie at Ulta as like a gift with purchase. The problem is I think these are both matte ones. Yeah, so this one is in nude linen and this one is in blushing rose. I think it was like a similar thing where it just was not worth the hassle. Like I was not going to after a while, like I, f I was curious about them. I used them a few times and then I had to force myself to use it a bit more just to feel like, you know, I've given them a fair chance. But the final verdict was these weren't special enough for me to pull for this over my regular powder eyeshadows. So again, these are gonna go. And let's see, what is this? This is a Butter London Sheer Wisdom Serum Shadow in Mauve Mist. I don't think I've ever used this, to be honest. Let's see, is this brand new? No, it doesn't look like it's brand new, but I don't feel like... Okay, so I feel like it's another matte one once it dries down, but I don't think I've actually ever used it. While I have a hunch that I'm not going to maybe fall madly in love with this, I do hate getting rid of products that I haven't actually tested properly. So maybe this Lonely Warrior is actually going to stay, at least for now. He's probably going to end up in a basket of doom at some point, but I think we need to give this a chance. Now, these are five of the Sydney Grace, what are these called? Cream, I guess, eyeshadows that I've had for a while and have actually used a few of these. However, it may have been in this Christmas in July sale. I got a whole bunch of mystery bags and then maybe actually even the year before they were doing some sort of a sale and I just kept accumulating these cream eyeshadows. Please don't ask me why. Well, I think because so many people have been talking about them for years. I've heard Alejandro or Alex Liz that I think she is here on YouTube. I'll link anybody that I ever mentioned down below, but I heard her talk about these for a long, long time. My friend Kelly from Keep Beauty Real really, really loves these. Uh, several other people here and there have heard mention these that, you know, they're just like the absolute best. And I don't know, I guess the sale prices got to me. So I've accumulated so many. I mean, look at all of these. There's other new stuff in here that I can show you guys at the end. But of course, none of these I'm I'm decluttering because none of these I've actually used. I'm hoping at the end of this video to fit as many of them in here as possible because while I do have a basket of shame, which is essentially, it's now become a drawer of shame. I actually got like an extra set of plastic drawers to put under my desk. So I've put, a, I have a drawer designated to all new products that I've purchased and have yet to ever try. But I've noticed I don't always go into that drawer. So I actually like to have the products that I want to use as quickly as possible, like that I want to try first, I've noticed it's better for me to put them in my actual makeup collection because I find that I'm still going into my makeup collection first before I go into a drawer of shame. I don't know if that made any sense. Sorry. <laughs> I seem to not be able to really string too many thoughts together today. But in any case, so yeah, these are staying because I have not had them that long in comparison to some of these other things. And I haven't really tested all of them out equally. All of those other new ones will be staying as well. But for now, we're going to take a break from this drawer because really the only things I'm keeping are these two products and all of my Sydney Grace cream eyeshadows, which I will organize later, let's get into all the other stuff. All right, so two products I just recently got in my latest Beautylish lucky bag. If you want to see uh, the unboxing for that, I can go ahead and link that up above for you. There was a little set with two of these Charlotte Tilbury color chameleons. These are essentially the Oh my gosh, these are just chubby pencils and I have used these a couple of times. I don't know yet how I feel about them, so hopefully I'll come back with some more thoughts in a future video, but I have it in Pillow Talk and Smoky Pillow Talk. So these are gonna stay because I'm still in the process of testing these out. This is brand new, which should be in my little baggie here with all the brand new products that I can quickly glance over at the end. I'm trying not to include brand new products 
thoughts in these declutter videos because I don't really have thoughts on them. But I'm happy to show you guys what I have at the end in case you want to request videos on anything or you want to give me your thoughts on products that I have, etc. Since we already talked about the Charlotte Tilbury sticks, let's talk about the only other ones that I think I have. I have these two Mally ones. These used to be popular many, many years ago, and I actually have used both of mine quite a lot. But as you can probably see, these are getting tuggy. They're still working, but they're getting tuggy. These are old. These are old, and I have definitely given them some love back in the day. Yeah, like this one, I would really have to warm it up, I feel like, to use it properly. I could still make it work, but I just don't see myself doing that with the amount of makeup that I have and just with the amount of other products I want to get through and test out. I don't see myself reaching for these. So these are gonna go. This is another one that I used to really like. This I got in a subscription box. This is from Beauty For Real. This is a 24-7 eyeshadow stick in all day latte. Made in Germany, okay. Let's see how this one is. Um, this one is still okay, but am, again, am I actually going to use this. I don't think I am. I feel like I'm starting to become that person where I am more into the one and done, but I have these two now. I don't even know. Okay, so this is the more matte one. I mean, these are so much more creamy than any of the other three. Oh, and I also do have, I got this as a gift with purchase. I do have this Bobbi Brown cream shadow stick. I've had so many of these over the years that I have gotten rid of because I didn't really used to be the kind of person that wore these sort of products, but let's see what color this is. Okay, so this is more of like a, is this a bronze? Ooh, that's very nice. That reminds me of the Mali, but it has a little more shine to it. And obviously, since it's brand new, it's creamy. Let's do this. Let's keep these three. Let's get rid of these three. I think... I think that's what we're gonna do. Let's tackle this. This is a very nostalgic drawer. A lot of the products in here, with few exceptions, I have had for a really long time. And a lot of these I used to thoroughly enjoy, but it's been a long time. And I've accumulated so much new makeup since then that I'm wondering if I really do need, in fact, to keep most of these or get rid of at least a few. I think I'm gonna get rid of this Stila concoction because this has completely dried out. This is the uh, liquid eye primer that you were supposed to use together with this flaky kitten shade. If you guys have been around, you remember this whole situation. It came with a mixing tray and everything. Ask me how many times I used it. Maybe once or twice, maybe. I, I don't remember. That's how long it's been, clearly. So yeah, that's gonna go. Another one that's gonna go, I think, because I keep admiring it every single time because it does have a shift, is this NYX uh, shade in Mermaid Sirene. It's a really cool topper. Oh, see, every time I swatch then I'm like, though, but do I, do I really wanna get rid of this? Cause it is a cool topper and it has a fun shift. But I have, I have new shifty shades. Yes, they're not like this, they're more impactful, but I have like Cleona shadows that I won at the Creators and Friends event in Vegas back in December. And I haven't even worn all of those on my eyes yet. I have things. This is a maybe, hold on. This is a maybe, I still, I'm having a hard time. This is a colored rain shadow that I keep saying I need to use more because it is just such a bright 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 yellow gold but then I never reach for it because again I don't really do single shadows very often I mean you can see that is but unless I depot it and put it into my magnetic palettes, because now I'm building build your own palettes, I don't see myself using it. So I don't know. I mean, if it's easy enough to depot, maybe that's what I'll do. But otherwise, I'm going to, I think, declutter it. Or should I just go ahead and declutter it? I feel like I would, if anything, actually wear this more as like an inner corner for a pop because I don't find myself wearing these very, very yellow gold 
folds all over my lid very often. So the question is, how often am I going to do that? And can I find something else in my collection that will do something similar? Probably. All right, let me think about this one. See, I told you guys, this is a nostalgic drawer. There's older products in here that I'm just not sure I can part with. Notice I am like for now staying clear of the L'Oreal Infallibles because that's going to be a trip. All right. And these two actually. So these were all the rage for a while there. Were these, what, what was the brand? I can't even remember. Ardency In, there we go. This was one of my first blue-brown shades, you know, like the MAC blue-brown pigment that of course now everybody has. This is in Peacock. And I'm gonna swatch it, we'll put it right here. I think I still had some of that gold on my finger, I apologize. But look at this. I've had this shade for so long, for so long, and it still is so good. So good. So I have that one. I also have Heaven. I mean, look, years later, here we are. Look at this. Here we are. And then these were so good. And then I have Copper. Mm, another one. Hello. Like, how am I supposed to get rid of these? How? How do I get rid of these? Look at them. I think these need to go into a basket of doom because I want to see what are they going to do on the eyes. Because it's been a really long time since I've worn them. But like based off of the swatches, I can't, I can't. I just can't yet. So I think these three are going to stay. I think this Essence Snowflake though can go. This was another one of those. Some people used it as a highlight. Some people used it as in the corner. It was popular for a while there. But now it just looks a little dusty and nothing exciting. This Smashbox, I keep here even though technically it's like a little mini palette this is a little photo studio it's meant to be like a, a lens right so a photo edit eyeshadow trio and i've always really loved that and actually the few times that i've worn it i've always really liked this so let's see how these swatches are gonna hold up now that i am a little more well versed i mean look at that that's really pretty and then we have this it's kind of like a glitter but it seems like it's encapsulated in something it does stain though like immediately as you can see and then there's this one It's really nice. I think this needs to go into a basket of doom. So this is definitely a basket of doom. These I'm still thinking about. And these are going in a basket of doom. Let me take these out because I feel like the ring light is making this so much worse for everybody. This NARS duo in, oh gosh, Kuao? Kao? I, I'm not sure. I'm so sorry. <gasps> uh oh, wait, what? It's breaking? Oh no, it broke. Wow. You know you've had a NARS duo for a long time when it breaks because NARS products don't usually fall apart like this. But maybe, maybe, oh, I'm making a mess. And that's not a maybe, that's a definite. Let me go clean this up because I'm going to make a mess. Hold on. Hold, please. All right, so maybe this was a sign that it's time to let this go, even though I actually had every intention of keeping this, to be honest, because these are still really beautiful. And it's a great combination. And I'm now actually really upset that this broke. It's all just crumbling and falling apart, which is a total bummer. I wonder if these are something I can depot. Gosh, I haven't depotted in so long. I used to with the whole like heat up the back and melt it all down. And I don't know, it just feels a little daunting now because <laughs> I haven't done it in so long. I'll think about it. This is either just gonna go in the trash or I'm going to try to depot this. We're gonna put it in the declutter for now until I figure it out. Let's see, this Lorac Suede Potted Shadow. I have used this a few times and I can't feel like I didn't love it. I think what it is, is it's like, it has the micro glitter in there, which looks very pretty under certain lighting. But I feel like for my preferences, it's just not enough. Like I either prefer you're just smooth and creamy with no shine, just like none of the little glitter specks, or I want something that's a bit more impactful. But I don't quite remember how it translated on the eyes. So I think this is gonna go into a basket of doom. Since I've 
pulled out a cream though. These two are staying. These two I acquired in 2023 at the cosmetics company store. I believe I got these in July. Yeah, because my best friend and his partner and I went out to Long Island. There's like a outlet mall all the way out east and they took me on like a day trip. We did winery and a bunch of other stuff. But one of the things that we did was we went to the outlets because I really wanted to go to the cosmetics company store that carries Tom Ford. We have another cosmetics company store about an hour and a half north of New York City, but they happen to have an actual physical Tom Ford store right directly across from them. And because of that, Tom Ford has forbidden the cosmetics company store to carry Tom Ford in that location. I made that mistake once. I went all the way out there looking for some Tom Ford products and they told me, no, sorry, we don't carry them here because there's an actual store, a Tom Ford store that is in this mall. And because of that, we're not allowed to carry Tom Ford. So I finally got my hands on some Tom Ford products from a CCO. I got this cream shadow in Sphinx, which does have a really cool shift. I have worn it quite a few times and have really enjoyed it it's a little patchy i do have to say like you kind of have to work with it a little bit because it's a little too creamy and too wet going on so like if you start blending it too fast or whatever it gets like all smeary and stuff but i do love the color and i definitely will continue to use this and then this is the cream and powder eye color in a one naked bronze so it has the cream on the bottom which is this shade right here so it's kind of like that Lorac but it doesn't have any of the glitter which I feel like I sort of prefer to be honest but then you can also use separately or together this topper shade it's not very opaque it's more of a topper you can see that brings the shine in right and then like if I put it over here you can kind of see so it's it's a bit more sparkly than the Lorac once you add the two together so that's why I really should use these both and just see what do I prefer but I definitely do enjoy wearing that once in a while and those two products those two uh Tom Ford potted products are the ones that kind of made me believe that maybe I can still become one of these single eyeshadow easy look kind of people uh, Surat I have this souffle eyeshadow in Gris Gris is it Gris Du? Grease do I don't speak French, I am so sorry. But I got this in the Creators and Friends goodie bag when I went to Las Vegas for their holiday party. Back in December, this is a very funky, it is really like a souffle. Like when you touch it, it is truly like a souffle. It's a very bouncy shadow and I have used this several times by now and I really, really like it. So there it is swatched out. If Surat was a more affordable brand, I probably would look into picking up one or two other colors, but for now, I will be very grateful and happy to use the one that I have. All right, I've got I've got these two Wet n Wild Creme Brulee shadows. I've gone through so many of these back in the day when I didn't have a million eyeshadow palettes, but this was something I would set my eyeshadow primer with. This is just a single that back in the day was like a dollar or whatnot and I probably was on sale like buy one get one and I have an extra I know I've gone through at least one full one of these back back in the day and I don't know I feel like I almost never use this anymore so I'm wondering if I just like should keep the one that's open for the times that I do need to set and the eyeshadow palette that I'm using doesn't have something like this and maybe just give this one away because it's gonna take me like four decades to go through both of these. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm just gonna keep one and give away the other. Okay, these these have made a grand old TikTok comeback. They're now in completely different packaging and now there's even palettes that have been made with new shades or whatnot. But these are the Urban Decay Moon Dust shadows. And for those of you guys 
that are new to the beauty space, this is what they used to look like. I've had mine for a long time. Here's Space Cowboy that you guys are probably very familiar with. But I also happen to have Zodiac. I don't know if you want me to swatch these out. These are so glittery. I'm going to be like covered in glitter. But there's space cowboy that is of course just a topper kind of similar in some ways to the tom ford topper then we have zodiac this one has more opacity to it for sure then i have ether ether which has a little bit of like a dark base to it but you do have to build it up to kind of see it it's still has a toppery quality then we have intergalactic i don't know why i have two purples like i kind of wish i had lighter shades of these but apparently when i bought these this is what i was into okay so this is this is definitely more of a top in comparison to that so that one is very pretty and then i have scorpio which is is this like a black or like a super dark green Mm, or like a black with i don't even know i don't know if that's a super deep green or a black so yeah i think because these are having a moment i'm gonna go ahead and keep these i'll be honest i don't use them very often but i guess i'll give them a little bit of time and if i'm still not using them maybe you know in my next year's declutter some of these are going to go i can see myself using space cowboy and intergalactic probably the most and then on days i want to be like really smoky and sultry reaching for one of these this is probably the one i would use the least i have a feeling that is my guess all right and we've reached my most nostalgic segment this programming and that is my l'oreal infallible shadows and my nars what were these called the dual intensity eyeshadows i even used to have whole palette of these eight shades and fool that i am i regretted that i ended up returning it i think or selling it or something i wish i hadn't these were so gorgeous these are so expensive i don't know if they still make these i mean years later look at that years later we're still doing that this is such a pretty eyeshadow. I'm keeping this. However, I don't think I need to keep all of the infallibles because if I'm being realistic, I just have better quality eyeshadows by now. Yes, these are very nostalgic and yes, I would love to keep all of them, but I just don't want to be hoarding things for the sake of nostalgia. Some things, yes, of course, I am human. Some things still tug at my heartstrings more than others. We're going to swatch these and we're going to see what I feel like I should keep all right let's do this black one with the glitter it's called eternal black and that's exactly what it is it's a black with glitter so we got that then i actually want to swatch this one this one feels like it is it drying out maybe a tiny bit no never mind no this one was this garnet glistening garnet then we have endless sea oh, so pretty they're still so pretty why are you guys still so pretty this is golden emerald and and last but not least here you can kind of see so it's it's a bit more sparkly those who know know say it with me amber rush Ooh, wow she is crumbly i probably got a little too excited though and dug in Amber Rush was, she was the star. Yes, she was. And you can see why, right? You can see why. She is still the star. This is actually quite a satisfying arm right now. I do have to say, it really is. And I think what I'm gonna do, just because these are not shades I wear on the daily, and I think feel like I have them in powder eyeshadows that I'll probably think to use first is I think I'm gonna get rid of these two. I'm gonna get rid of Endless Sea. I'm gonna get rid of Glistening Garnet. And the question is, do I need both of these? I mean, this one's definitely black, black, like much more pigmented. I guess let's keep it and maybe I'll try to make an effort to use some of these, throw them into Basket of Dooms this year or do something, incorporate them somehow, and then I'll decide. 
next year if all three of these get to stay or not. I don't even know how often I would use Amber Rush. This is a nostalgia keep, I think. I would definitely give it a try and see if this is even still usable on the eyes because it did get crumbly pretty fast there. But yeah, I think I need to actually use these, see if they still perform okay, and go from there. All right, so let's see what we're left with um, before I show you all the new stuff. Okay, this is not how this is going to be organized because the Tom Ford pots don't even fit into these drawers, unfortunately, and I stacked up some of these basket of doom items but this is from what you saw at the beginning is what i'm keeping this is everything that i'm getting rid of and of course that does not include the new products that we can quickly go through at the very end but let's count what i'm getting rid of so we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen i did decide to get rid of these two shadows 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 so getting rid of 24 products and keeping one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, almost half not counting the new stuff so let me clear all of this out and let's just quickly go through all the new stuff that i would like to try to use this year or at least some of it okay so last but not least let's look through the brand new products that i need to try this nomad shadow in stockholm is something my friend steven gifted me i had at some point purchased this la girl shade shifter because i was curious about these i think these came out last year in 2023 so i have yet to try these these were on sale in the ulta 21 days of beauty and i have yet to try this as well i know my friend kelly really likes these these are the matte fluid eye paints i got the little set of minis would like to figure out how to use those and then i have this is i guess the yeah this is the fractal eye paint the glitter one the mousse shadow and this is in tin pan alley so i definitely want to try that and then as i mentioned i have all of these sydney grace cream shadows i am not going to go through every single one today just wanted you to see how many i have and if you guys want me to do a separate video on all of my sydney grace products i know i had promised uh, you guys to do that last year i think before the christmas in july sale but i had gone off youtube back in like may or june so that never happened but i could potentially do that later maybe in the springtime or something because of right now i have a bunch of other things that i would like to film first but if you are curious and we can go through the swatches and whatnot and by then hopefully i will have tried some of these and we can do that so i'm going to try to reorganize one of those drawers and put at least some of these in there so that they're front and center for me to use and that's basically it so that was my single eyeshadows and pots and eye sticks and eye creams collection and declutter i hope that you guys enjoyed it we've got just two more videos left possibly three if i decide to do the skincare we're almost there thank you so much for sticking through this declutter with me it's been so much fun to have people come back and comment on every video i've really loved seeing that so thank you so so much and other than that i hope that you guys are doing really really well one more reminder to please subscribe if you haven't i hope that you guys are staying safe and healthy taking care of yourselves and those around you and i can't wait to see you in my next video bye guys mm -hmm.